Hi everybody, I'm Gwendolyn Stirk of Stirk Family Law and I'm privileged today to have Margo McDermott with us who is a representative for where our office is located here in the 37th district in Illinois. Welcome Margo. Thanks Gwen. You know, I, we get together regularly to talk about new laws and things that have occurred but one of the things that's been on our heart lately is the issue of suicide. Suicide seems to be on the rise and if you hear the stories and you read our local paper, you'll see families where perhaps the father has committed suicide, not able to care for their children. You see children committing suicide. You see just a growth of this topic and a lot of people saying we really need to start addressing suicide. And I know that the state of Illinois has taken some steps in the past year to be able to do that. First of all, can you share with us some statistics or some information generally about suicide that people should consider? Well, it's the 11th leading cause of death here in the state of Illinois, uh, but for young people, 15 to 34, it's the third leading cause That's of incredible. death. So this is an area where we need to pay attention. Right. Um, and it affects men more than women, Interesting. Caucasians versus more than people of color. Um, the highest suicide rate is among men 65 and older. It's frightening. Veterans are one and a half times more likely to commit suicide as are people in rural versus urban areas. So it's um, a thorny problem. Right, and it's a topic that everybody needs to address. I know that at a federal level, we now have a new number that we can call um, for purposes if you're thinking about suicide or you need help, or even if you have a family member where you think suicide is gonna be important. It's my understanding that number is 988. Do you, are you familiar with that step that has been taken? No, I didn't know about that till you told me yeah. today. But that's so it's a, real interesting. You know, I think that people picking up that phone and knowing that there's help out there, you know, because a lot of people don't know where to turn. And I am always an advocate saying that people feel paralyzed. Their trouble or their immediate sense, they can't get their hands around it. The rest of the world is moving forward and they're stuck in the problem. So if you pick up the phone and you dial 988, at least you're going to have a voice on the other end to deal with, you know, to One talk thing to. that I see in the state legislature, because now we look at the whole state, right. is that these problems are not just one community. Right. They're not just the suburbs or the city or downstate. These are problems that affect everyone and we need to have a universal solution right. or a universal ways to address the problem. Now I know one of the things the state of Illinois did this last year is deal with it at the university level. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what needs to be available? Um, parent advocates wanted to make sure that the universities are publishing information about the statistics of what's happening at their campus and making information um, available very widely for students to access because young people are they're thinking about vulnerable it, right absolutely and also the mental health things that are being addressed so having that information readily available and speaking about it and taking it out of the box or underneath the box and saying this is a problem here's where you can get help right that's really the purpose and we know that if we can stop someone that chances are very high that this will be the only time they act interesting if right. we can intervene we can stop this and they can get help. Now, I also understand that there was something that the state of Illinois did with regard to first responders dealing with suicide issues. Can you tell us uh, about that? Another thing that we know um, from hearings is that first responders are very vulnerable in this area and because of the stressful jobs they have and often come from a military background right. where, again, this is a uh, something that affects that community. Sure. Um, this is a problem in the first responder um, community. So we established a peer support program. Great. And we wanted to make sure that the work that first responders are doing with their mental health providers is kept confidential and also created a task force to try to see if there's some other things we need to do going forward to address uh, suicide prevention for this community. Sure, by having a task force and that peer support, you don't have to keep it hidden. You can start talking about the issues without the fear of losing your job. Well, and in that community, it, it's not cool to be seen as vulnerable. So right. we need to make sure that people understand it's okay to step forward and say, yeah, this is really stressful. I need a little help here. You know, I think that I, one of the things I'm seeing is that at least we're talking about mental health more. You know, it used to be a subject that people wouldn't address as freely. Would you agree with that? I would absolutely agree. This last year, I was not on the mental health committee, but for the first four years I was down there, I was. And that's one of the things that we found is it's really important for, to destigmatize mental health issues right. and to treat them in parity 
with other health issues right. like diabetes or heart That's problems. That's absolutely right. And to make sure that um, health care providers, insurance companies, and the community as a whole is treating the whole range of conditions that affect our human bodies. Correct, right. And, and not putting brains. a stigma and separating exactly. that. Exactly. You know, and a lot of me medical issues like cancer or something can affect the other areas. You know, we can't forget that. It can be an isolated situation with mental health, but it also could be your physical health is affecting mental health, and it's all one and the same, and it's time to take that stigma away. Yeah. So if you're out there today and you have a family member, a friend, a coworker, um, somebody that you know that is thinking about suicide, you know, oftentimes you see the signs, but you don't talk about it, or you think the person that is talking about it isn't really going to do it. It doesn't matter. Reach out, get the help, get the information, right? Pick Absolutely. up the phone, call 988. Yeah. And you'd be surprised how much this affects every family. Right. Right. It's not just you. You're right. not isolated. You're not the only one. That's correct. Right. You know, sometimes I think that just that stigma, taking the stigma away, having that conversation, and recognizing that the person next to you might be having a lot more going on than you know, and removing the barriers. So I'm glad that the state's taking action, and I appreciate your time on the Mental Health Committee as well. So important. Thanks.